G'day. One of my subscribers has asked me about the product rule in calculus. Now, I've already produced a video explaining how to do it, but I haven't really given that many examples, and this subscriber provided me with 12 of them, and uh, has asked me to solve a few. I've decided to do all 12 in four separate videos, three questions per video. And uh, these are for Chelsea. So if you're watching Chelsea, these are for you, but anyone else who wants to watch can benefit from your request. Now, if you don't fully understand what I'm doing, then please watch my original videos about the product rule. But let's get started. First of all, I want you to notice that we have a product. We have two expressions. And they're both polynomials, they're both in fact quadratics, which means that we have a choice of two options, two ways of doing this. We could expand, multiply it all out, and expand it into separate terms and find the derivative that way. Or we could in fact use the product rule. Now, both have their merits depending on the complexity of the problem. But seeing as this is in a product rule uh, exercise, we're going to use the product rule. And quite frankly, it's probably the easier method here anyway. So, what is the derivative? Well, using the product rule, because there are two parts to this expression, we're going to have two parts to our result. The first part we find the derivative of this, the first thing we encounter, and leave the second part alone. So I'm going to write that here. And for the second expression, we're going to find leave this part alone and find the derivative of the second bit. So I'll write this down here. So what I've done is I've left a gap here for the derivative of the first part and here for the derivative of the second part and everything else I've written in place. So let's write in the derivatives. What's the derivative of x squared plus 6x plus 5? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 6x is 6 and the derivative of the constant is 0. So there's our derivative. What's the derivative of this? It's 2x minus 4 and the derivative of minus 5, of course, is 0. So there's our derivative of the second one. That's the product rule completed. Now, at this stage, we would like to find, or at least simplify, the expression. If we left it like that, no one's particularly happy. The derivative has been taken, technically, but mathematicians would expect you to tidy it up, and it's a very good habit to get into. So, we will factorise this. It has a common factor of 2. So it's 2 outside of x plus 3. This is factorizable, So let's factorise that. Uh, this is x minus 5 times x plus 1. What do we have here? Well, I'm going to deal with this first. <clears throat> this has a common factor of 2. So it's 2 times x minus 2. That's dealt with that, 2x minus 4. And then we're going to factorise this. Well, this is x plus 5 times x plus 1. x squared plus 5x plus 1x is 6x, and 5 ones are 5. So, out of both of these expressions, what do we have in common? Well, we most certainly have the 2 in common. And if you look at the other factors, only the x plus 1 is in common. So, we'll take out 2 times x plus 1. If we take the 2 and the x plus 1 out as factors from the first one, we leave these factors. And from the second expression, if we take 2 times x plus 1, out, we're left with these two factors. You can see that algebraic manipulation is very important at this level of mathematics. So, 
we're going to expand that quadratic and expand that quadratic or binomial product. This will expand to, I use this pattern, I refer to it as the claw. A lot of people use foil and things like that. But anyway, we get x squared plus, minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x. And 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. Here, we get plus x squared plus 5x minus 2x is plus 3x minus 10. Copy those down, and what have we got left? We have 2x squared. We have a 3x take away 2x, which is an x, and we have a minus 25. Now, at this stage, again, as part of the tidy up, we might be interested in whether we can factorise that. Uh, the, the only two factors I can use for 2 because it's prime, a 2 and 1. This could involve a 25 times a 1 or a 5 times a 5. And none of the combinations really give me a 1 in the middle. But to make it more explicit, if you really want to do a quick test, on the side of your page, you can work out the discriminant. You might remember this from your quadratic equations. And what would we have here? Well, we would, b is worth plus 1, so we're going to have 1 squared minus 4 lots. So a times c is 2 times minus 25, is minus 50, or negative 50. 1 squared is 1. <coughs> minus 4 times minus 50 is plus 200. That's 201. Now, because it's positive, it means it can be factorised. But... 201 is not a perfect square. So when we take the square root of it, we're going to get radicals or thirds. And consequently, factorising this is going to be difficult. Uh, it will involve thirdic roots or, or radical roots, and we most certainly will not be able to factorise it using integers or whole numbers. So that's where we stop. That is the complete answer. And we actually have it in the form we like, with the simplest bit first, the next simplest bit, and then the more complicated bit. That's the kind of courtesy we have in mathematics. So there's our first example done. Let's have a look at our next one. Here's number two, and we'll go through this one very much more rapidly because I think you can see it's got the same structure. A quadratic times a quadratic. We really don't like to use a multiplication sign in algebra, but there it is. So let's find the derivative. Normally, because I'm, I've practiced a lot, I do it from left to right, but let's put the structure in. Derivative this times that, so we'll leave this here. And then we leave this alone. And what we're going to fit in are the de derivatives. The derivative of this is 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3, that's 0 of course. The derivative of this will be 2x plus 1 plus nothing. There it is. Now there's no common factor here. There's no common factor here, but these ones may or may not be factorizable. Looking at this, uh, it's not going to be factorizable. Uh, that one doesn't look very appetizing either. So at this point, because there's no common factor and because it is untidy, I would expand. So we've got 2x times all of this is 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 10x. That's 2x times each of those. Then we've got negative 3 or minus 3 times all of these. Shouldn't leave those dots there. And now we're going to do this. I'm going to do 
multiplied by these two. 2x times all of this Where did I get the... Did I do something? No? I'm pretty right. And 2x times 1 is 2x. And because I'm running out of board space, I'll now do one lot of these. I'll write them underneath. Plus x squared minus 3x plus 1. Well, that's an awful jumble. I'm just concerned I might have got some of my powers incorrect here. That's all good. That's all good. Okay. Let's collect the cubes. We only have two of them. 2 cubed and 2 cubed is 4 cubed, x cubed rather. The squares. We have 2x squared, that is another one, and there's another one. Let's look at the... Here we have plus 3x squared, take away 3x squared, so they eliminate, we're only left with this. Let's look at the x's now. We've got 10x minus 3x plus 2x minus 3x. So 10x plus 2x is 12x. Take away 6x and 6x. And the constants, we've got 1 and negative 15. So putting those together, well that's a lot tidier. I think you can see here that the common factor is 2. And with a prime like 7 at this end and a prime like 2 at the other end, we aren't going to have too many options to consider here. Um, if you know your uh, factor rule and your product rule with polynomials, you can certainly try to factorise this, but I would probably leave it like that at this point. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I would try and factorise it and then, then leave it. But... Uh, because I'm interested in not making these videos too long, I'll stop without trying it. It doesn't look to me like it'll factorise at the moment, but I could be wrong. But there's your second one done. Let's look at the third one. Now this one is starting to branch out a little bit. Still a product of two expressions. A linear one here and a quadratic one here, but the quadratic one is cubed, which makes it a sixth power. Now, expanding this becomes a bit more tedious. But if we think of it as a product, we're going to have to use the chain rule here because we have a function of a function. Well, let's see how it works with the structure I recommend. The derivative will be in two parts because there are two terms, two parts of the uh, product. We're going to find the derivative of this times this, so let's leave this untouched. And then we're going to leave the first one untouched and find the derivative of this, remembering that we're going to use the chain rule. Now the advantage of writing this structure first is that when we come to do the chain rule, we can concentrate on it and not worry about remembering what's coming with the product rule. The product rule is essentially finished. We've actually got it set up. What's the derivative of x plus 1? Well, the answer is 1. That's easy. Let's go to the other end. What's the derivative of this? Well, it's a function of a function. When we deal with this outside function first, the derivative of some power, or power up to the 3, is 3, so it's times 3, x squared minus 3 squared. That deals with that. And then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is simply 2x. Now, if you weren't sure what happened there, please watch my uh, video about how to do the chain rule in 20 seconds. I think you can see we did that in well under 20 seconds. Um, I can recommend that you have a look at that. It's about a 20 or 25 minute video because I use a number of examples, but please go and have a look if that's new to you. Now, because we have something plus something, we look for common factors. We have a bunch of x squared minus 3s, We've got powers here, and there's nothing else really except 1. 
So we certainly need to take this out. The rule is we take out the lowest power. So 3 and 2, 2 is lower. So we're going to take this out as a common factor. So let's write it here. x squared minus 3 squared. I'll use brackets now. I'm not going to worry about the 1 because 1 times anything is the same. So if I take that out of that, in other words, if I divide it out, if I'm dividing these, I subtract the indices, and that's one bigger, so I'm going to get x squared minus 3 to the power 1. Now, I'm not going to write the parentheses power 1 because it's at the front, it's positive, there's nothing else influencing it, so let's leave it alone. That comes out in its entirety, x squared minus 3 all squared, so we're going to be left with 3 times 2x is 6x, times the x plus 1. Let's see what we get. x squared minus 3 squared. And in here we're going to have x squared minus 3 plus 6x squared, that product, and 6x times 1 is 6x. And this is going to be x squared plus 6x squared I'm going to write this first, by the way, and then explain why. 6x squared and x squared is 7x squared, plus 6x minus 3. And I'm going to write this second. Because there's a kind of a convention with polynomials and with in, in this kind of mathematics, we put the simpler function first and the more complicated, bigger powers uh, later on in the expression. Now, can we, this is, we've done as much as we can here. Can this be factorised? Well, 7 is prime, 3 is prime, so we've only got a possibility of 1 times 7 here and 3 times 1 there. And no combination between 7s and 1s and 3s and 1s is going to give us a 6. We get 1s and 7s and 3s and 21s. Nothing will give us a 6. So that, I would say that's non-factorizable with whole numbers, with natural numbers, or at least with integers. Um, so that's the answer. Just remember that when you're tidying up and you're taking out a common factor, that you take out the lower power. Well, that's it for this video. I, I Normally you'd do these much faster than I did them. But I'm trying to discuss as we go. Three done, another three coming. Thank you for watching.